Welcome everyone. So good to see you all today. My name is Pat Lee. I'm the lead facilitator and community host of the Reu Mindfulness Collective. Our mission at Reu is to nurture well-being and resilience through meaningful connections and the use of accessible tools such as mindfulness-based stress reduction, narrative therapy, journaling, and lived experience storytelling. So thank you for joining us for Mindful Lunch today. Mindful Lunch is a free event uh, where we invite a guest speaker to come in and share some of their tools, their wisdom, their experiences and practices to help feed our mission. And today's guest speaker is Kate Friesen. Um, Kate is a facilitator and story strategist. She is the force behind her company, The Story Source. Kate has joined us in the Zoom room today to discuss the power of stories and to share some of her tools for telling stories about ourselves and the ways that we can use stories to inspire purpose and action. Welcome, Kate. Thank you for having me. Always good to be working with you, Pat Lee and to see some familiar faces and names here. Can you tell us a little bit about why you came to working with stories? Sure, and I was thinking when we were talking about this yesterday that maybe the question is, is why stories insisted on working with me? <laughs> um, it may be both ways. I think um, uh, a thread in my life and I'm 61 now, and so my thread is quite long to pull it all. Uh, a thread in my life has always been connection and curiosity. I've always been curious about other people. Um, I've always loved to connect. And I have found uh, um, in my experience of connecting that story can be an incredibly powerful way to connect. And um, so that ran through my life in so many ways. Um, for years, I worked as a songwriter, and um, and what I loved best was bringing that song to the stage and feeling that connection. Um, I landed at CBC through through uh, serendipitous um, uh, circumstances and started to uh, to learn how to tell other people's story, and and I saw the power of story to make to make change. Um, and then when I made the jump to my own business, I really just thought story is something I love the best. So I'll just put it in my job title. Didn't have a business plan. I just had a job title. And um, and and then and then went and went from there. Um, what what excites me now at this point in my life is I don't need to be on stage anymore. Um, it was great being on stage as a songwriter, but I love being backstage and, and how, helping other people find their stage and their stories. So I walk with people and work with people to discover and tell the stories they need to tell, to uh, move forward the work they need to, to move. And so you can also call that lived experience storytelling, and that's where Pat Lee and I have a strong, strong connection. Um and and recently, a friend of mine who also works with story, uh, someone asked her why she works with story or why you story. And she said she thinks about it more as I am a servant to the story. And in some ways, um, what I want us to do is tune our ears today to uh, to listening to our own story and allowing it, you know, and, and interacting with it. I don't know if servant's the right word, but to be connected with our own story. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I see. Like, I like that point that you made that why why did story choose to work with you as opposed to you choosing to work with story and the concept of being a servant to stories, um, however one might wish to interpret that. 
stories are really interesting. And I am particularly drawn to the aspect of lived experience storytelling and, and how that helps to cultivate, helps us cultivate and show our resilience. Um, in fact, it's not even so much about cultivating our resilience, but talking about our resilience. Mm. Uh, Kate, why is it important for individuals or why do you think it's important for individuals to claim ownership of their stories about themselves? Mm. That's such a good question. And it's the story that I always start with when I'm working with people is a story of who you are and how you landed where you are. And I know that we all have thousands of stories. Um, really, we do. From the moment from the moment we're born, we're, we're, we're part of a story. We're making stories. Uh, we're, we're part of yeah, we're part of a larger a larger story, um, w- but I don't think that society and and the culture um, uh, calls us often to listen to our own story. I was thinking when I was preparing for this, Pat Lee, about um, a book by Parker Palmer, um, who's a writer, wonderful writer uh, and educator, and he has a book called "Let Your Life Speak." And he said, how often have you been at conferences or you're here or maybe even here at this thing and you're jotting down what the speaker says? Ooh, that's wise or that's amazing. He said, why are we not listening to ourselves and writing down our own stories? And I thought about that today um, is 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 listening to our own stories is about finding who we are in this world, what we have to offer uh, and and what makes you know listening for what makes you come alive, listening for what for what your what for what your strengths are, um, and uh, you can still keep writing, Sheila, uh, and <laughs> and listening. Um, and when we're listening for that, we are connecting with ourselves, and um, and it has to start there. It has to start there. You got to be grounded and connected in yourself before you can share those stories with others. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's another thing that, that really helps me out when I get stuck. Um, and it's a way that I use story that's not public. That's more between me and the story is framing a challenge, a choice, and my sources of strength or hope. So, um, uh, stories, um, Pat Lee, you and I were talking yesterday, our stories, like, are we always looking for the happy stories? Mm-hmm. It's not really about the happy story. It's about the human story. Mm-hmm. And in a human story, uh, it's actually not even about being a hero, though that's good too. It's not about being a victim. It's about being, um, in your own story and, and reflecting humanity. Um, so they, there's, there is no Hollywood ending. There is no happy ending. Uh, we land and we start another story. Uh, but for me, sometimes, uh, defining my challenge, um, seeing where I took choices, who believed in me along the way and where I landed, um, can help me figure out how to take a next step Mm -hmm. or to see where I had strength, where I couldn't see it. Uh, before. And those are all really important parts of uh, really simple storytelling structure that I use, which is a character. And in this case, in a lived experience story, that's me, or that's you, Pat Lee, or anyone in this room, you're telling your story. So a character faces a challenge. They make a choice. Sometimes they draw on other sources of hope. Often we do, we just don't even remember that we're drawing on that. And then we land somewhere. Um, and then we start again. Mm -hmm. So those two, those two things are really good reasons to, to connect with story. And then once you do that, um, when you share stories with others, you are offering up something of yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I work with, uh, you know, Pat Lee, you and I met, uh, in an entrepreneurial workshop, uh, working on the power of the pitch, then it's about like offering your story uh, as a way of making a genuine connection and um, and and building trust, which is really important. Mm-hmm. Offering a story of yourself uh, is really a gift to somebody else. And it allows them perhaps that moment of courage to offer up a story of themselves. Mm-hmm. And when we can make that exchange, we can often work across differences. Um, Stories show, not tell. And that's one of the things that that I love about them. And when when we tell somebody, 
trust me. <laughs> okay, that's never worked for me, but it still slips <laughs> out occasionally. As opposed to showing them uh, a time, you know, when you, for, for me, showing a time when I had a challenge and I made a choice that brought me to this work. Um, then they are allowed, they can take what they want, what they need from that story to make that connection. So, so those are the, those are the three things that I wanted to highlight today around why work with stories and why we all need to work with stories. And just a connection to that great um, mindfulness lunch you had last week with, um, uh, not last month with Sharon Ingster um, mm -hmm. around heart math and that idea that the heart also, um, the heart ha actually has a voice and the heart actually like feelings are in the heart, not just in our head. And so story has that amazing ability to hold heart and head and hands mm -hmm. because often it is about action. Mm -hmm. So um, th uh, those are the reasons that I continue to be really passionate about story and, um, and, and, and how I see it really powerfully working. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, thank you so much for that Kate like I I remember to this day my very first workshop encounter with you uh, and the question was to think of a moment and to go back to that session where um, last month that we did on that mindfulness session that we did last month with Sharon Ingster uh, I remember I shared uh, a story about my most harrowing anxiety experience and when we were in that workshop, we were thinking about that moment. That was a moment that I went back to, um, which is not a good moment. It wasn't a good moment. It was a very difficult experience in the moment. But when I looked back at that experience through the lens of story, as you were encor encouraging us to do in that session, I was able to understand and really work with that as an opportunity where there was challenge and change you know or seeing that as challenge and change and then walking that that additional path um or that new path that story that experience was pushing me towards right um and I think that that's just you know that's one of the the really interesting things about stories because from that story um I can you know, more confidently um, engage with authentic leadership and demonstrate my resilience. And that is what I put forward in, in my own business and, and personal practice. But we don't often hear people wanting, hear or see ourselves in a position where we want to talk about those not positive or those, the stories that are not as positive or as happy. Right, we tend to be drawn towards sharing the good stories. Um, why do you think it's important for us to 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 share the ones that are not necessarily as positive or as happy from time to time, even if we don't share them publicly, but to take a look at those? Well, I, I go back to it's human, it's humanity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know when I when I I, I get into the uh, the uh, the the scroll of death on on Instagram and I see these perfect stories <laughs> it uh you know th that does not really actually cheer me up mm. when I connect with someone and I hear a story uh that feels human and go oh they struggle too mm. um and there are ways out of that struggle um that that is what encourages me and so so uh, the, the same with with our own stories and and then deciding out of those which stories you want to share it's it's not about oversharing or or or, uh, or or sharing everything it's about choosing a story that may build a bridge so we can start by choosing stories that build a bridge with ourselves and remind us um that and sometimes revisiting things that felt like failures and i you know maybe no one else in the room's got them but i know patley and i have those um <laughs> and revisiting it and reframing and seeing where where I've come now can be um a, a source of, of of strength yeah wonderful wonderful thank you so so Kate in the Ryu community we offer practices and workshops that help people cultivate and reflect and where needed you know work to change their self stories Right. That's what we're about. So one of the great things about Mindful Lunch is that we get to introduce the audience to a new tool 
as something that is not just coming from us inside the community, but from someone external that we can incorporate and build on. So what did you bring for us today? Well, you, you mentioned the take me back to a time and place or that moment um, and the moment that you first shared when when we were in a workshop together. And I really want to come back to this tool. And a few of you in this room have worked with me and, and know this tool, but I want to use it a little differently today. So before I explain that, um, I want to explain, um, I, I want to talk a bit about what Pat Lee and I were, were preparing for this yesterday. And um, and and I had been thinking about what to, what to offer up, and what to offer up, particularly now at this point in our world, where the shadows are long, um, and the news is hard. And uh, yesterday, um, uh, a colleague of mine posted Manel is her name. Uh, she posted the idea of 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 having ghosts in the room, and and our role as facilitators to to sometimes name name the ghosts. Um, bring it to the surface, give a voice and space for expression. And um, and uh, and in doing that, when Pat Lee and I were talking about about the, the long shadows that are extending in the in the world, we talked about uh, two concepts that we use that are, and we're going to apply those to this idea of take me to a time and, and space. Pat Lee, because I asked you, Pat Lee, you know, you know, what, what how do you sustain yourself uh, when times get dark like this? And you had this wonderful term, well, I look for pockets of peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, and I look for sources of hope. So today we're going to use this tool that I call uh, Take Me to a Time and Place. It's, it, it's a way too long a title. Uh, or I call the most essential story skill. Or, you know, you can call it what you want. But I'm going to share my screen I'm going to teach you really briefly how to use this tool, give you some examples, um, and then you get a chance to try to try it out. So um, I'm just going to share my screen. Can you see that? Great. Yes. So one of the uh, the reason I call this the most essential story skill is that you always know you're in a good story when someone's taken you to a time and place. You know, uh, the, 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 those people who seem to have that natural talent for you meet them and you go, you'll never guess what happened to me yesterday when I was on the bus. And suddenly you're on the bus with them. That kind of uh, a sense of inviting you into the story. Um, you know you're in a story. And when you know you're in the story, as the storyteller, when you take somebody to a time and place, you're connecting to that moment yourself. You become present and connected. That's why it's going to be careful today, like what, what moment we take, you, you, you take yourself to. It's really powerful. And as a listener, and you'll feel this if you choose to get into a breakout room and exchange those moments, you instinctively begin to relate to your own past experiences. And this is, um, we can go into the neurophysiology of this. We're not going to, you've probably heard, heard that, that we're wired for story and there's debate about it now again, but you are wired for your senses. So um, when you go into a story and someone takes you to the time and place and they said, I stepped into the kitchen and I smelled that bread. Well, if someone said that to me, I immediately think about my, my parents' kitchen and fighting over the crusts with my sister when the fresh bread came out, we all wanted the crusts. So when we take somebody to a time and place, um, they begin to relate it to their own experiences. And when we're thinking about using story for connection, that's a really, really powerful thing. The life writer Mary Piper says, we all process things through, process things through our bodies. In a pr profound sense, our bodies are what we have in common. Um, I've had this experience again and again when I've told stories across cultures and across age differences. Recently, I told a story about my growing up, um, you know, and I was telling it to a room full of 18 to 20 year olds, all of them newcomers to Canada. And, and, and like at least half of them identified with the story, not because we grew up similarly, but because they found some resonance in it and some truth in humanity. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use that idea and I want you, I'm going to encourage you to choose a moment for yourself. 
Um, and there's going to be two moments to choose from. Well, two kinds. Think about a moment that may be a pocket of peace. And I really want you to think to a specific time. And I'm going to come back to the example. These examples uh, in, in maybe for hockey, it doesn't seem to you like a pocket of peace, but for somebody else, it really does. That homemade meal together. Um, and this one in the right hand corner is my walk that I do at least three times a week. And I'm going to come back to it later when uh, when I model how we're going to use these moments. So what what is your pocket of peace is totally up to you. And every one of us will have a different one. But there are three examples when somebody steps on the ice, how they feel totally present in their bodies and it's peaceful for them. The other one you can think about, and this may resonate more with you today than the other one, is sources of hope. Um, this is Bear Clan volunteers at the bottom, uh, someone involved in a bike challenge and uh, making bikes for kids. Um, this is a moment for me when I was uh, at the at the march and rally standing up for uh, trans youth and um, and feeling in that in that moment in that crowd so much love and so much hope. So with each of these, I want you to start thinking about it. You might be want to write it down. Uh, just what that moment would be. Get really specific. And this is how we can get really specific and start to visit that moment again. So take yourself back to that time and place. I'm going to I'm going to do this with that moment on that path that you saw. And there's a really specific reason that I ask for a sound first. Sound and smell are very connected to our memory and very connected to our heart. Like I mentioned that smell of bread. So starting with what you heard in that moment is a really powerful way to begin. So what I what I hear when I'm standing on that on that mound, that little mountain in Omens Creek is I can hear the traffic in the background, but it's really far away. I can hear the river and I hear in the summer, I hear the birds. Now I hear the rustle of the leaves. Um, I often walk there with my friend Marguerite. And what we are doing in that moment is we turn to the east, look to the east and greet the day. And then I turn to the west and my friend always laughs at me. And I wave because I can see my shadow and I see the path and I go, Kate, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be okay. I don't know what's around the corner. So I see that path winding around the corner um, and it's always in the morning. So I'm in Omens Creek on the top of this uh, special mound that has four rocks. And how do I feel in that moment? I feel hope um, and I feel grounded. And I pick that moment because it always makes me laugh because Marguerite teases me about it. Mm -hmm. And also that it's it's a moment that I can I know I can revisit even when I'm not there. It's mm -hmm. also pretty close to me, so I can run out and go to that mound when I need it. Mm -hmm. um, and I yeah, I picked that moment because in that moment, I feel like I'm connected to nature and I'm connected to the day. And the day is what I have and need to pay attention to and hold. So that's the idea, um, a pocket of peace or a source of hope. And these are, the, uh, these are the questions that I want you to ask yourself. I'm gonna give everybody a minute and I know it doesn't seem like a long time, but don't overthink that moment. And if you need to go far back, that's fine too. It could be last week, it could be three years ago. It could be really many years ago, but what comes to mind? And then sit a while with those questions, a while, a whole 60 seconds that I'm going to give you. Um, I'm also going to ask um, SJ to put the questions and uh, those first two, the moment of uh, a pocket of peace and a um, moment of hope. And then these questions, if you can put those in the chat, that would be great, SJ, for those who want to cut and copy them um, if you're working on a computer or just have just have with you. So I'm going to give you um, 
uh, a minute. And um, I'm gonna time that SJ, I think I've got this one. And uh, just spend a little time with that moment for now. And then also at this point, if, if you wanna share that with one other person in a breakout, that's great. If you don't want to, uh, then, then let SJ know. Our breakout rooms are really short, by the way, they're five minutes. All right. I know I never give enough time in these uh, in these short sessions, but it's a hand. It's a chance to get your hands on the tool, is what I call it. So, um, SJ, do we have people for breakout rooms? We have one breakout room. Yeah, we have one breakout room. Great. Um, and the rest, uh, if you're staying in the room, I have some suggestions for you. So, then uh, you can start the breakout room. And um, I'm going to stop my share. So for those of you who are in this room, um, I'm going to invite you during this five minutes to um, think about uh, building up a, a Rolodex. Do people have Rolodexes anymore? Is that even a good image to use? I don't know. I don't think that's a good image. <laughs> so, okay. so here's what I, I use. We know what you mean. I use index cards. I, I get I get boxes of them at the dollar store. I hand them out to everyone. I use them all the time. Um, and I actually keep moments, um, sources of hope, um, and now pockets of peace. I keep I keep those index cards um, and remind people uh remind me sorry you can't even see it it's 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 a little stick figure with a soccer ball and and then or i just have a note walk to omens creek watching the sunrise and i keep them i keep them by my desk and when i said that earlier patley you ran out you ran from your screen and came back with one too yes i've got mine i have this just one of many like I write mine on the back of postcards mostly. This is the only one I have written on an actual index card. Yeah. So um, so I'm gonna invite you uh, to use this, this tool of, of going back to that, especially starting with the sound and, uh, and explore a couple of moments. And um, we have like four minutes and then when we come back, we're gonna have a little exchange. So I really encourage you to, to stay present. But also, if you're going to be writing and thinking about that, feel free to turn your camera off for this time so you can basically retreat into your own room um, and we'll give you a heads up when we're like we're one minute from coming back. They're coming out now. Welcome back. Uh, for those of you who are working with your own moments and those of you who are exchanging, um, I'd love to hear um, a couple of things just to start. When you went back to that moment, uh, did any of you, and you can just raise your hands uh, physically or digitally, did any of you start to remember that moment more clearly than you had in a while? Or, um, yeah. Those of you who did go to a breakout room, did you find you had something in common with the other person or something that resonated? Yeah. Amazing. I'm going to leave it open. Um, and again, if, if you share something in here um, that you may not want later to be in the recording, I think that's fine too. This space is, is for, um, it, would anybody be willing to share either their moment or an aha they had while they tried yeah. this? I think your questions were great because it wasn't just sort of a visual memory. It was multi-dimensional. What did you taste? What did you smell? What did you hear? And I felt my memory, which was of swimming all mm. alone in a lake that was very cold with a loon, mm -hmm. <laughs> two loons in the lake, mm -hmm. um, it was just such a great memory of peace. But I never really thought about anything except going from point A to point B until these questions were part of my thinking. Hmm. So I wanted to say thank you for making it more sort of spherical. Hmm. Thank you for that. 
Um, yeah, you know, they're, they're basically the, the five W's and the and and the how question that that we, that we we learn in journalism, in some ways. But it's really important, and I learned that this summer in some of the studies I've been doing uh, around the craft of it's called public narrative, is leaving the feeling question for later, so that you can really ground yourself in the body first, and then move to the feeling. There's that's a real key to using it. So thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Anybody else want to share a moment or have an aha or a question? Christy. One of the things I noticed that was in common with our stories was that we couldn't fabricate them. We had to create opportunities for them to happen and sort of come across them which I thought was sort of like really nice. You stumble into those little pockets. You can't create them. Right, right. Oh, that's such an interesting way of putting it, which is which is like a lot of life too, right? We keep stumbling into the little pockets. <laughs> Some of them are deep pockets. <laughs> Some of them not. Yeah, I love that. I love that observation. So if you're thinking about some um, uh, other questions, um, I just wanted to mention that um, that why call, I mean, there is a reason this is an essential story skill. And it's often, I, I first started doing this when I was working with people who didn't have English as a first language. Um, and um, and I wanted to, to give them oral storytelling experiences and this was this was a great way to do, to to do it, where they could be really concrete about things uh, to begin with, and then also share something. So often within unpacking a moment, you find a whole story. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're working with people, those of you who work in organizations um, or working in in connection, asking people about moments can be a wonderful way of them showing not telling and you being able to find something out about them that that you may not know. I mean, you have to figure out the situation to do that in. But one of the reasons I always work when, with a group that I don't know, especially with moments, it's it's always around the positive inquiry idea where we're going for a moment that's positive. And then you can take that tool and work through other moments if you want. I'm just going to leave... Uh, one more space if people want to ask questions. I just wanted to observe one thing for me in, in using this is, is I can often really um really change my my own my own sense of being grounded by coming back to one of these moments. So it's a really good tool to use and and not to negate or ignore the dark shadows in your day or in the world, but that we need to keep putting our own oxygen masks on in the work that we do. And that's another way of looking at this is um, using your own stories to bring yourself back to a place of strength and hope. So you can go back to the work that you're that you're doing and, and bring yourself and your humanity and your heart into it. So I'm gonna turn it back to you, Pat Lee. If I, if I could just uh, uh, say yes to that and and just add my own thing, because I was about to say that that was the thing that resonates for me with the ideas of pockets of peace and sources of hope. And I think one of our, our guests um, hit the nail on the head when she said, you can't fabricate these things. Um, you fall into it. And most of the times you don't recognize that this is the situation that you're looking at a pocket of peace or a story of hope until you look back at it. You know, it's more of a retrospective action. And this is what journaling, and especially when we think about mindful journaling, like in, in my circle, that's what, that's what that exists. That That is what it is. It is using those stories to even those, um, even those, those shadowy moments, those moments of interacting with the shadow to unpack that and to remind ourselves that underneath the shadow was a source of hope or a pocket of peace and taking that out, vitalizing it, 
making it much bigger and having that be the focus of our attention and our next step forward as opposed to the shadow itself. And it takes a lot of work to get there, but this is the, the benefit of story skill and story practice, right? So I just wanted to add that. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So um, I just wanted to just find out if there was anyone else that had any questions or any points that they would want to just raise before we move into our closing moments. You can always put your point in the chat as well. Um, and if you have any questions, Don, did you have a... Just a comment that these tools are really good for getting us in the moment. Mine is about being off by myself uh, when I'm golfing. And I'm always golfing with friends, but because I'm bad, I'm often by myself in the woods or something. <laughs> but those questions help to get to the moment. It's just not, not about golfing with friends. It's about this moment of solace and, and being by myself and experiencing the whole thing in the moment. And these questions help you to get there. Mm. Uh, so thanks for that. Perfect. Thank thanks you for sharing. Thanks, thanks for sharing that, Don. Thank you. For That's sharing. my moment with soccer too. It's not about being with everybody and being really good. It's about actually making contact with the ball <laughs> and that feeling. Yeah. Lovely. Right. Lovely. Thank you so much for joining me today, Kate, and for sharing these tools and and tips with us. Are there any other? tips or tools that you care to leave with our audience today that we can we can send to them after after this meeting ends yeah i'm going to offer up these slides and the slides that i haven't shown are are some tips for using this story skill to apply to other situations um to make connections with others and and to use it in your work so um and in in the in those slides you'll you'll see my contact as well and if you have any other questions well reach out to pat lee or to me that's fine um, yeah, so I'll offer that up after. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kate. Thank you so much. What a wonderful lunch. Uh, I know a couple of people had to pop off a little early. We're about to wrap things up now. I hope you all feel physically and mentally nourished by this mindful lunch session. I know I have, like I'm smiling ear to ear. I always love connecting with stories and connecting with Kate. I hope you'll join me again in November when our next guest speaker will share insights about navigating the complexities of trauma and resilience with oral storytelling. Uh, that's going to be a really great moment. As always, the learning and the practice and the answers to questions and the sharing of ideas continues inside the Ryu community. Just a reminder to everyone that Ryu is free to join. And we have other events that are available to community members, including this month's uh, challenge, the Your Hero's Journey postcard challenge, which is about halfway through at this point in time, but you can start at any time. It's really fun. And uh, we also have other online um, events that you can join us, uh, such as our virtual retreats or journal together sessions and our pop-up story circle sessions, which um, take place at various times. Uh, we've got a couple of questions in the chat. Um, how do we find you? Are you on social media, Patley? Yes, we are, Don, and we'll definitely share some of those information with you. You can find us um, and all our resources at reumindfulness.com. And we'll also share all of that information when we send out resources after our meeting today. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. It has been my pleasure. I hope you feel nourished and I hope I'll see you soon. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Bye everyone.